everybody, welcome back to James Redmond TV and welcome to another Redmond Roundup where we discuss about just how we cannot compete. Why can we not compete, James? Are you being negative again? It's actually, I've not came to the conclusion. Again, I'm searching because I'm leaning more towards, I'm not sure if we're going to compete. And these things, day by day, kind of prove it to me. At the moment, we're in a footballing world where there's no salary cap. And I'm not saying there should be, I'm just saying there isn't one. Therefore, you can pay a player whatever they want as long as it accommodates your finances and it doesn't get you skint. I say this off the back of the news of Erlen Halland, potentially, I don't know if it's 100% confirmed, but it sounds unbelievable, potentially getting a weekly contract of 865,000 British pounds every single week. What does that mean on a 365 days a year basis? 46.5 million pounds a year is what Erlen Halland will be earning if that contract is true from the sources that I've seen. If it's not true, we know he's not earning far from that anyway. And to put it into a last bit of context, that is £500,000 more than the second highest player, a paid player in the Premier League. And to be precise, it's £565,000 more than Mohamed Salah. And Mohamed Salah has only been on that contract for the best part of a year or two. And he spends about three or four years on a two hundred grand a week contract or 180000 a week. Still a great contract. But I am here to say we cannot compete. I am here to say that the connections that Todd Bowley, because we were talking about Chelsea yesterday as well. You know, are they cheating and something's fishy there? And the information I know is that there's a group in Saudi who invest billions apparently into a fund or a, a capital fund that Todd Bowley owns. And therefore that's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. I think it's just a crazy good link or crazy good connection to have that these Saudi clubs so happen. to Because Todd Bowley isn't building the Saudi league. The Saudi league are building the Saudi league. And Todd Bowley just had to happen some big names who were on the other side of their career and would have probably liked to make some big bucks. I think it just went in hands in hands. And I know I've done the, 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 the attention grabbing title. And if you're ever a YouTuber, you can't do it any other way. You need to get the views. But I, I did ask throughout the video, throughout the stream, are Chelsea cheaters? And does this mean the cheaters have they just found a loophole? Are we just worse cheaters than them? If we're cheaters, if everyone's cheaters, because Derby County even cheats... So if we're in a game of corruption, then you've got to identify the corruption and then compete with it. So therefore, we came to a conclusion, Chelsea likely never cheated. Yes, it's a little bit fishy, but I don't think there's anything direct there to say two parties, Saudi and Chelsea, in this interest, even though they have a common interest, doesn't mean they still can't do business within each other. Because again, Todd Bowley isn't the people who are buying these players to Saudi. If it was him, then maybe you're talking about some money laundering or something. But I, And I'm not saying there's definitely nothing fishy. Where there's money, there's always something going on wrong. Where there's money, there's always corruption. Always look in the direction of money. But I'm just saying, if we can't compete with it, then do we need to readjust expectations? And then going back to the Haaland thing, if you're Manchester City and you can pay £865,000 a week, that's huge money. That is ridiculous money. And that's why I'm suggesting the idea that how much smaller does the market become for these big-name players? And then how long can we keep on to the big name players. Because even though we had an era of dominance, there was an incentive to be at Liverpool over recent years. We were winning leagues, Champions Leagues, getting 97 points. We were winning week in, week out. There was a project that looked promising and therefore people would want to join. But then if you see projects like Newcastle, Aston Villa, who have spent immense money, teams who are going out there to overachieve, even teams who it hasn't worked out for, like Everton, but they've still spent some serious money on wages, managers, um, big, big signings, they have not played about. They just haven't done it right. But they were still there to compete. They played the game. They just It just never went in their favour. And now you're seeing teams like Newcastle and Aston Villa, who are now both European teams, and they're now getting stuff done. So the, the, the thing I'm leading to is, if all these teams are over doing what they need to do to get to the top of the league, or get there and thereabouts, and we're just doing enough to stay in top four, the top six no longer becomes the top six. The top six becomes the top ten. And then you're competing with even more teams for these European positions. Bear in mind, Newcastle, Villa and Brighton got European places last season. So it's not a top six or top seven. It's now becoming larger. And Newcastle are linked with Borella. We're not linked with Borella. That's one example to suggest that that's one more team that's now higher in the pecking order of attracting bigger name players. And I'm not saying Newcastle are a bigger name than Liverpool. But if they've got Champions League, they've got a project with a good young manager... They've got a good team building. They've got immense resources. They just need to sort out the FFP thing. There's a project there. Not to mention you're going to be getting paid stupid dollars. Liverpool cannot offer these incentives. We can't offer big wages like Man City. We cannot offer... Uh, we don't have big connections like Todd Bowley. 
quite clearly. And we don't have a men's transfer budget to even get on the brink of our FFP troubles, if you will. And I'm not saying let's get in trouble with FFP or anything. I don't think we're capable of getting tru in trouble with FFP quite clearly because it just seems that we're, you know, the owners are using us as just one big loan shark. The stadium was alone and a lot of these things are alone. And you think, okay, so there's this building up, but then you'd also need to take into account we want to improve, we want to advance, we don't want to get left behind. That becomes a problem, and then you start to think about the situation of the football club right now. Yes, these signings look promising and good if you're trying to be a European team. If you are trying to win leagues, you need to develop these players over years of time. So I'm not coming out here and saying that we're victims. I'm actually not even coming here saying City and, Ch City and Chelsea are cheaters. Um, I'm actually just bringing up that if they are cheaters, they are better cheaters than us. If they are not cheaters, then we're just worse at the football game than them. Um... And we just don't have the resources, we don't have the attractions, we don't have the incentives. That's a Liverpool problem, that's an FSG problem. Um, and therefore we will suffer as a consequence of that on the football pitch, which is what a lot of people care about, which is why I'm bringing it up to you. So it, it's not like a, a you know a video of excuses, or we need to start giving players 800 grand a week. I'm not saying this, um, but the, centi the incentive to come to Liverpool was already small. You know what I mean? Like Liverpool isn't one of the main attractions in terms of a place to live. So already you've got to just draw them into the football club and the fact that we've got City Centre. Oh, and you can live in Formby, by the way. Nice place, Formby. Some nice places in Crosby, but Formby probably better. Outside of this, we can't pay you the highest wages in the league. We can't pay you, you know, all these factors and variables. I think you get the point that I'm that I'm leading towards. Um, it's starting to get to a point now where it's not just scary because it affects us. It's to a point of how many more teams, like say if Everton sort the stuff out and United do all the... And we just keep aiming to be a top four team. What then happens? How far down the pecking order do we go to? Because our worst nightmare was being a Europa League team again and that happens. So how, how long until maybe it's worse than that? And I'm not saying that in the short term we're going to do this. But if Jürgen Klopp leaves and then we don't have that extra you know, expertise on the sidelines as a coach and the man manager who's going to sort everyone out through tough times because regardless however bad the seasons through injuries and other things, you know, Jürgen Klopp has always got the players back for the end of the season. He done it last year, he done it two seasons ago. It takes a certain type of manager to do this and now he's identified, I think we need more squad depth and I think he identified this before but he just hasn't had the option of getting more players. For instance, you know, start a last window, didn't want a midfielder, end of the window, brings in Arthur Mello. Definitely not a Klopp thing, you know what I mean? The, the, the club just noticed, okay, we need to accommodate him with someone. This is a gentleman who so happens to be available. But yeah, man, that's what I was talking about in this video. And if you're a City fan, it weren't slander at City. If you've got money to pay Erlen Haaland 800 grand a week, you pay him 800 grand a week. And like I said, he deserves it. It's not like he doesn't deserve it. And then if you're a Chelsea fan, from the information I know right now, I can't call you cheaters on the Saudi thing because it, it doesn't sound like it. It just sounds like a good connection and you both had a common interest. Chelsea wanted to sell, Saudi wanted to buy. It just sounded like a, a you know perfect time and so to speak with both projects being new. Um, and that's the conclusion I've came to. If you've got a point to negate anything that I've said about the Chelsea thing, City thing, like they are cheaters, definitive things, then yeah. And you can come up with your own conclusions and, and use your own logic that maybe they haven't done everything right. But then if they haven't done everything right, someone as little as Derby County hasn't done everything right, then who's to dispute that? You know, we haven't done something wrong. Um, you know, the, you know, it, someone said to me yesterday, we paid City a million to not take the case further with the, with the youth stuff. Why did we pay them a million to not take it further? Maybe there would have been inconveniences brought from that case and we can't compete with them. But again... That's another FSG problem. Um, so I'm not calling Liverpool cheaters either, just to get that out there. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's good to talk about this side of football a little bit. And again, I don't know everything, so I really appreciate the input in the comments down below. You guys are always correcting me. But that's the side or the point of view that I have at the moment. And I think it's just one of those where you've just got to say fair play. You're just doing it more amplified than what we are. Willing to take more risk than what we are with the more resources that they've got. Um, and with that approach, they'll probably continue winning. And Chelsea will probably find a way to win because Todd Bowley seems like a smart motherfucker. He does, he actually seems like a smart gentleman who, you know, he knows what he's doing and he's really eager. You know, and the man came in and said, right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make all these signings. <laughs> he was um he was ballsy and I respect him for it. And now 
he's got rid of a lot of Deadpool, which I thought was going to be the toughest challenge of the transfer window. So all remains to be seen on the Premier League front. But I will I will not lie, us falling behind in terms of resources is not only a worrying thing for me, but it should be a worrying thing for you if you're a Liverpool fan. And if you're a rival fan, you should be looking at the situation at Liverpool now, being as steady as it is and just thinking, oh, like in the short term, Liverpool could do bits. In the long term, the way it's going, you shouldn't be coming to that conclusion. We need to see a lot more for that to be the case because football is just changing rapidly year by year the world's changing rapidly year by year so we've got to keep up with that and it doesn't look like we're going to but guys i've been trying to end this video for the past five minutes thank you for watching let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed and i will see you all um, soon love you all peace out